In 1974, a team of paleontologists working in the Awash Valley of Ethiopia made a discovery that would change our understanding of human evolution forever. The team, led by American anthropologist Donald Johansson, had been searching the region for fossils of early hominids, the ancestors of modern humans. On November 24, a member of the team, Tom Gray, spotted something protruding from the ground. As they carefully began to excavate the area, they realized that they had uncovered the remains of an early hominid species that was unlike any they had seen before. The skeleton, which came to be known as Lucy, was nearly complete, with over 40% of the bones preserved. It belonged to a species of hominid known as Australopithecus afarensis, which lived between 3.9 and 2.9 million years ago. Lucy was estimated to be around 3.2 million years old, making it one of the oldest and most complete hominid fossils ever found. The discovery of Lucy was significant for several reasons. First, it provided scientists with a nearly complete skeleton of an early hominid species, allowing them to study the anatomy and morphology of the species in detail. Second, the fossil was exceptionally well-preserved, allowing scientists to make detailed observations about the species' locomotion, diet, and other behaviors. And perhaps most importantly, Lucy's discovery provided crucial evidence for the theory of human evolution. Prior to Lucy's discovery, there was a great deal of debate among scientists about the evolution of early hominids. Some believe that early hominids evolved from a single species, while others believe that there were multiple species that lived alongside each other. Lucy's discovery helped to resolve some of this debate by providing evidence that there was at least one species of hominid that existed during the same time period as other known hominids. In addition to its scientific significance, Lucy's discovery also captured the public's imagination. The fossil was named after the Beatles' song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which was playing on a cassette player at the excavation site when the team discovered the fossil. Lucy became a cultural icon, appearing in countless books, movies, and TV shows. In 2007, a traveling exhibit of Lucy's remains drew record crowds in the United States, cementing her place as one of the most famous fossils in the world. Great Zimbabwe is a ruined city located in the southeastern hills of Zimbabwe. It was once the capital of the Kingdom of Zimbabwe, a pre-colonial African state that existed between the 11th and 15th centuries. The city is considered one of the greatest medieval cities in sub-Saharan Africa and has long fascinated archaeologists, historians, and tourists alike. The ruins of Great Zimbabwe cover an area of around 722 hectares and consist of stone walls, terraces, and towers that are built entirely without mortar. The walls are made of granite blocks, some of which weigh up to 20 tons, and are held together by interlocking joints. The largest of these walls are over 11 meters high and several meters thick. The structures at Great Zimbabwe were built using only hand tools, making the achievement all the more remarkable. The city was a center of trade and commerce in its time, and its location on a hill provided natural protection from enemies. Great Zimbabwe was a hub for trade between the interior of Africa and the Indian Ocean, and its inhabitants traded in gold, ivory, copper, and other precious commodities. The precise origins of the Kingdom of Zimbabwe are not well understood, but it is believed to have emerged around the 11th century. By the 14th century, the kingdom had grown to cover a large portion of present-day Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Zambia. The city of Great Zimbabwe was the capital of the kingdom, and it is estimated that it may have had a population of up to 18,000 people at its height. In 1924, a young South African schoolteacher named Raymond Dart made a discovery that would shake the scientific world and rewrite our understanding of human evolution. Dart was examining fossil collections at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg when he came across a skull that had been found in the Tong limestone quarry in the north of the country. The skull was that of a young child, and it belonged to a species that was entirely new to science. The Tong child, as it came to be known, was the fossilized remains of a hominid species that lived in South Africa around 2.8 million years ago. The species was named Australopithecus africanus, and it was the first hominid species to be discovered in Africa. Dart's discovery challenged prevailing ideas about human evolution, which at the time held that early hominids had evolved in Europe or Asia. The discovery of the Tong child was significant for several reasons. First, it provided the first concrete evidence of early hominids living in Africa. This was a major breakthrough, as Africa is now recognized as the cradle of human evolution. Second, the Tong child helped to clarify the evolutionary lineage of early hominids. Australopithecus africanus was later recognized as a direct ancestor of Homo erectus, the first hominid species to migrate out of Africa and spread across the globe. 
The Nok Terracotta is a collection of ancient Nigerian artifacts that date back to the Iron Age, roughly 2,500 years ago. These sculptures were discovered in the late 1940s by British archaeologist Bernard Fagg in the village of Nok in central Nigeria. The Nok Terracotta is notable for its high level of craftsmanship and artistic expression, as well as its contribution to our understanding of early African history. The Nok culture is believed to have been one of the earliest civilizations in West Africa, and it is thought to have emerged around 1000 BC. The Nok people were skilled metalworkers and created intricate iron tools, but their most impressive creations were the terracotta sculptures that they produced. These sculptures depicted a range of subjects, including humans, animals, and mythological creatures. The Nok terracotta sculptures are notable for their high level of realism and detail. Many of the sculptures are life-size or larger, and they often depict individualized human faces with distinct facial features. The Nok people were able to achieve this level of detail by using a variety of techniques, including coiling, pinching, and molding. They also employed a range of decorative techniques, such as incising, painting, and burnishing. The Rosetta Stone is an ancient Egyptian artifact that was discovered in 1799 by a French soldier named Pierre-Francois Bouchard. The stone is a black basalt slab that is inscribed with a decree issued at Memphis in 196 BC, during the reign of Ptolemy V. What makes the Rosetta Stone so significant is the fact that the decree is written in three scripts, Greek, Demotic, and Hieroglyphic. This enabled scholars to decipher the Hieroglyphic script, which had been a mystery for over a thousand years. The Rosetta Stone is approximately 44 inches tall, 30 inches wide, and 11 inches thick. The text on the stone is a decree issued by King Ptolemy V, in which he grants tax exemptions to the priesthood and people of Memphis. The decree is written in three scripts, Greek, the language of the ruling Ptolemaic dynasty, Demotic, the script used for everyday communication in Egypt, and Hieroglyphic, the sacred script of the pharaohs. The tomb of Tutankhamun, also known as King Tut, is one of the most famous archaeological discoveries of all time. It was discovered in 1922 by British archaeologist Howard Carter, and contained the perfectly preserved remains of the boy king, as well as a treasure trove of artifacts and treasures. The discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb was a landmark event in the history of Egyptology, and sparked a worldwide fascination with ancient Egyptian civilization. Tutankhamun was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh who ruled during the 18th dynasty, from 1332 BC to 1323 BC. He ascended to the throne at a young age, and died when he was only 18 or 19 years old. Despite his short reign, Tutankhamun is one of the most famous pharaohs of ancient Egypt, due in large part to the discovery of his tomb.